Hi, welcome to Western Washington University. My name is Julia Eide. I'm one of our admissions counselors here in the office, and I'm here to share some more information with you about Western. In this presentation, I'm going to start off with some info about Bellingham, our campus, our location, how we relate to our community. I'll tell you about our academics, the opportunities we provide to our students, and we'll also talk about student life. Once we get you excited about Western, we'll talk about how we get you here. So we'll go over the application process, what that entails, and then I'll wrap up with some information about ways to fund your education. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are in Bellingham, Washington. If you're not too familiar with us, we are in the northwest corner of the state. So about 45 minutes south of Vancouver, Canada, and about 90 minutes north of Seattle, Washington. We're a mid-sized city, population of about 90,000, and our campus is very connected to the surrounding area. Downtown Bellingham is just a short 15-minute walk away, and buses run there as well. So whether it is on campus, downtown, or in the surrounding outdoor areas, there is a ton to do in Bellingham. We are a great place if you enjoy any kind of outdoor activity. Bellingham is certainly an outdoor lover's paradise. You can see from that picture, we are right next to the water. That's Bellingham Bay you see there. It's about one mile to the west of campus and our Viking Commons does actually have views of the bay. So that's a great place to enjoy a meal. In the opposite direction to the east is our uh, is the Mount Baker ski area. So that is uh, where you can go if you enjoy any kind of winter activity like skiing, snowboarding, hiking. Um, to the south of campus, there's also some great rock climbing, mountain biking, camping. So all kinds of outdoor activities. If that's not quite your style though, downtown Bellingham has lots to offer for you. Downtown is where you'll find some great restaurants. We have some wonderful local restaurants in town. And really, if you come visit campus, make sure you go downtown to get a bite to eat. You'll also find coffee shops to study in, shops to explore, used bookstores with stacks and stacks of books. We have two independent film centers. There's a place you can go throw axes. There's escape rooms. So whether it's on campus, downtown, or in the surrounding outdoor spaces, there is always something fun to do in Bellingham. And now our academics. So we offer more than 175 majors across our seven colleges that make up Western. And so no matter what college you're in, you're still a Western student. You can take classes across multiple colleges, but this is how we organize our programs. You can see the list there. I want to shout out a couple of the colleges on that list. First of all, Woodring College of Education. We started back in 1893 as the New Whatcom Normal School, a teacher's college. So that's really where our foundation lies in education and training teachers. In Woodring, we have programs in early childhood, elementary, secondary, and special education. So if you wanna be a teacher, take a look at Woodring. There are a lot of opportunities there. Next, I like to also highlight our College of the Environment. And this was one of the first environmental colleges to be established in the United States. So this is something that we've prioritized for some time, the study of the environment, sustainability, and how we can make both our campus and our communities more sustainable. If you are interested in studying the environment or sustainability, uh, it's a really good idea to take a look at this college. There are multiple degree options in both environmental sciences and in environmental studies. So whether you're interested in sustainable business practices, environmental journalism, marine ecology, toxicology, or anything else, there's a lot of programs there so that you can find one that will be the right fit for what you want to do and what you're most interested in. Speaking of finding the right fit, last on that list there, but certainly not least, is Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies. And Fairhaven is very unique. So first of all, they are our smallest college on campus, so it is a pretty tight community. But what really stands out within Fairhaven is you actually have the opportunity to pursue an interdisciplinary concentration. What that means is instead of, for example, majoring in English, where the department creates the curriculum, gives you the classes you take, in Fairhaven, you're working with faculty and an advisor to say, this is what I want to know, and you're actually designing your curriculum. So it's great for students who have interests that lie in the intersections of multiple disciplines, or if you're interested in social justice and the law, Fairhaven College does have a very strong emphasis in social justice, and they actually house our Center for Law, Diversity, and Justice here on campus. Next on this page, you can see popular majors. We have more than 175 majors. I really encourage you to explore. You can go to our majors catalog and see all of the programs we offer. It'd be a very long PowerPoint if we listed them all. So popular doesn't automatically equal better. These are just some of our larger programs on campus, but I really encourage you to explore. You might find a program that you are really excited about and learn more about what the curriculum and opportunities look like, or you might find something that you didn't even know you could study and you're really excited about it. So really keep those options open and see what's out there. 
I also want to share some information with you about our Honors College. And I know sometimes when I say Honors College, folks might think that that's not for them, but it is. The Honors College is for students who are very engaged in their education, who are passionate about learning, who want to be in a smaller community with other students that share that passion. So it will be a separate application. You'll send in a sample of your best uh, written work as well as respond to their essays. You wanna keep an eye on those deadlines. January 1st is their priority date and regular decision is March 1st. If you are interested in the Honors College, I really encourage you to reach out to the folks at Honors. They can definitely get you some more information on what the curriculum looks like. Some of the benefits of Honors are smaller class sizes. At Western, our average class size is 27, but in Honors it's 12. So it is very discussion-based and about how you think about things, how you look at the world around you. So consider honors, and you also would get to live in Eden's Hall, that's the building pictured there, which houses our honors residential community. And of course, another huge part of your college experience is student life. How do you find your people in your community on campus? It can feel a bit intimidating going away to college sometimes, so we wanna make sure it's easy for you to build those connections right away. One really great way to do that is through clubs. So we have more than 250 different clubs on campus, ranging from academic based like our chemistry club and psychology club. We also have our skiing and snowboarding club, which is sometimes our largest club, very popular in this area. Uh, we also have the Harry Potter club, so all kinds of interest. It's a great way to connect with other students with that shared interest and just continue doing whatever it is that you enjoy. If you decide to live on campus, you can also get involved in residence hall activities. And so when you live on campus, there's different events that will be happening in your residence hall throughout the year. They might be smaller things like your whole floor will have a movie night in the lounge or go to dinner together. And it could also be larger events. Our um, Eden's Higginson community puts on a haunted house in the fall, for example. So there's always uh, something happening and you can go to those events and just get to know the students living around you, or you can help out with planning. Shifting gears a bit here to our Resource and Outreach Programs Counseling Center and Career Services Center. These are some resources we have to help you be successful. There's no one formula to a successful college experience. What you need to succeed will be different from what the student next to you needs. So we offer a wide variety of resources for you to take advantage of so that you can have your best experience. For the academic support, we have our tutoring center. This is in the library and where you can go to meet with a study group, connect with a tutor, or just work on study skills. Sometimes that transition from high school courses to college can be a little difficult. So if you need help with lurk, uh, working on your time management study skills, you can also go there for that. We have our research and writing studio. This is also in the library, so a great building on campus to know. This is where you can go for writing support. So if you're working on a research paper, an essay, you can go there and get some feedback. The Counseling Center is our mental health resource for students. This is where you can go if you would like to meet one-on-one -on -one with a counselor to make sure that you're getting the support you need to look at long-term options. And they also will do outreach events like a group workshops on healthy stress management techniques. So make sure you check in with yourself and just make sure you're taking advantage of these resources. The Career Services Center is another great one and you can take advantage from day one. You can start planning for your career. Uh, you can go to the Career Services Center and practice interview questions, have them look over your resume. They even have the career closet where you can go get clothes to wear to interviews. So if you don't have those clothes, no worries. Our Career Services Center puts on various internship and job fairs throughout the year. So it's a good idea before you go to those fairs, hit up the, the Career Services Center, practice some interview questions, have them look over your resume, get some advice on how to navigate interviews and uh, finding a job and then go to those fairs so that you are really prepared to be successful and you can start planning for your career from day one. Going into athletics and intramural, study abroad, some other ways to be involved on campus and make sure you're getting the most out of your college experience. We are a division two school, so if you do want to be a student athlete, it's a pretty big time commitment, but you can reach out to the coach of the sport that you're interested in. If that's maybe more of a time commitment than you're looking for, we also have intramurals. So this is where you get some friends together, make a team, and play against other students a few nights a week. So it's a lower time commitment. You can stay active, have fun, continue competing, and playing your sport. We also have a very robust study abroad program. So our education abroad office is here to be that all-around resource to help you go abroad. When you're in those beginning stages of finding a country or program, a topic to study, they can help you with exploring those options and then also help out with the planning. So passports, visas, will your credits transfer, housing, all of those details, they can help you navigate that so that you will have a wonderful, safe, successful experience. 
but you don't have to go very far away to see some amazing places. So we have our Lakewood Boathouse and Outdoor Center, and these are two resources we have on campus and near to campus uh, to help you get outside and explore this area that we're in. The Lakewood Boathouse is over on Lake Whatcom. It's about a 12 minute drive. You can also take the bus out there. It just takes a little bit longer. At the Boathouse, you can go rent out kayaks, canoes, paddle boards. You can even take a sailing class and get college credit for learning how to sail. And then um, on campus is the outdoor center. This is where you can go borrow equipment. So if you wanna go up to Mount Baker and try snowshoeing, but you don't have the gear, you can check it out from the outdoor center. They also offer excursions. So if you've never gone mountain biking or kayaking and you wanna learn how it's done, you can actually sign up for a trip led by outdoor center staff. So you can have that guidance and make sure you're learning all the proper techniques to get outside and explore. All right, and now that we've told you a bit about Western, our campus and our community, let's talk about how we get you to campus, starting off with what do we look for in an application? We use a holistic method of application review. So we do consider your academic performance, that is a piece of our decision, but we also want to see your contributions to your community, your achievements and experiences. In the next couple of slides, I'll tell you how you show that on the application. So this is for first year students. I'll have some information for transfer students in a couple of slides. It's an online application. You can fill it out either on our website or we are also on the Common app. You can use either of those, both work. You'll send us your transcripts that show your grades from the beginning of ninth grade through the end of 11th grade. And you'll also fill out your senior year schedule with the classes you're currently taking or planning to take. If your schedule changes during your senior year, that's okay. You can always call us or email us and just let us know so we can make a note of that and update it. Next, we have the activity list and essay. And these are my favorite pieces of the application because this is where we get to hear about you as an individual. So the activity list is everything you're involved in outside of homework and class time. It could still be a school activity like music, dance, clubs, theater, leadership. It could also be athletics, working, caring for family members, volunteering in your community. It's really everything that you're involved in. And my piece of advice for this activity list is detail really helps us. So please spell out any acronyms. And um, if you want to put the dates that or length of time you were involved in that activity, what you did, did you have a leadership position, that really helps us to understand what you did. Next year we have the essay and the essay is your chance to tell your story and for us to hear your voice. So it shouldn't be an academic paper or something that you submitted for class. Instead, some topics you can think about addressing are why do you want to go to college? What are you passionate about? Do you have any experience that you feel is very important for us to know to understand your application? Why should Western be excited to have you as a student? It's okay to brag about yourself a bit. We really want to know you and what makes you stand out. Next, we also have our optional tell us more essay. And this is a space that if you wanna leave it blank, that's okay. But if you have more information you want us to know, this is where you can fill that in. So if you have some extenuating circumstances that impacted your academic performance and you want us to know that when we read your application, you can fill it out there. I've also seen students use this Tell Us More space to include a creative writing sample or to put in an additional essay because they just have a lot that they really wanted us to know about them. So it is very open-ended. Feel free to take advantage of it. Letters of recommendation are also optional. So if you'd like to send those in, you can, you can email them to us. And then we are test optional as well. So if you have taken the SAT, ACT, you can send in those scores. We will consider, consider them. But if you don't have test scores, don't wanna send them in, that's okay. It's not necessary and it's up to you and whether you feel they would add to your application. We do have a $65 application fee, but we have need-based fee waivers as well. We don't want this to be a burden on you or your family. We don't want this to prevent you from applying. So if you do need that fee waiver, you can request it at the end of the application right before you submit it. And apply early. So here we have our admissions deadlines. Our application usually opens in the beginning of September. So keep an eye, you can actually sign up on our website to be notified when the application opens. And the first deadline early action is November 1st. If you apply by November 1st, you'll hear a response from us by December 31st, and you'll also be the first to hear back about scholarships. This early action deadline is non-binding. Regular decision is January 31st, so if you need more time, maybe you're putting those finishing touches on your essay, you have until January 31st to submit all of your materials. Here I have some information for transfer students. So again, it is an online application. 
For transfer students, you can only apply through our website. We're not on the Common App for transfer applications, so just keep that in mind. You'll send us official transcripts from all colleges and universities that you've attended, and the essay will be a bit more focused on your academic and career goals, how Western fits into that plan. But there is still that optional tell us more essay. The application deadlines for transfer students do vary, so for fall quarter that deadline is March 1st, so just keep an eye on that. Make sure you know the deadline for the quarter you want to start in. All right, and now that we've gone over the application, we're going to talk about ways to fund your education. So first, right at the top there are FAFSA and WAFSA. FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. WAFSA is the application for Washington State financial aid. You'll submit one or the other, not both. Most students use the FAFSA. The WAFSA is for Washington State residents who don't qualify for federal aid. So if you're not sure which one, you can always reach out to your counselor at your high school or us and we can help you figure it out. And apply early. That's really some of the best advice I can give you is apply early and keep an eye on those deadlines. They tend to sneak up on you. So both FAFSA and WAFSA open up on October 1st and the priority deadline will be January 31st, which I hope you'll already have marked in your calendar since for first year students, that's also the day your application is due. Here we have a summary of the types of funding to help you understand your aid offer when you receive it. So you might receive grants. This is money that's given to you for your education that you do not have to pay back. Think of it as like a gift. So Pell grants are going to be federally funded. State need grants, of course, are state funded. You might also receive loans through your aid offer. These you do have to pay back. And there's a few different kinds of loans. So subsidized, unsubsidized, there's parent loans. So the type of loan and amount will be noted in your aid offer. You could also choose to take out a private loan through your local bank or credit union. And then you might also receive a work study. What Worksturdy does is it provides funding for you to have a job on campus. So you do still have to find that on-campus job, but our Student Employment Center website makes it easy. You'll log in with your Western account. Uh, you can sort, sort by work study or non-work study jobs. You can look for what type of job. So that makes finding a job on campus really easy. And we do have a pretty wide variety of student jobs available. You could work in the library, in our dining halls, in the Office of Admissions leading tours, which is a really cool job. Um, you can even be a kayak instructor in the Outdoor Center. So there's a lot of opportunities to find employment on campus. And of course, another really popular way to fund education is through scholarships, which I'll talk about on this next slide. So here's our Western scholarships. We have a few different kinds. At the top there, your admission scholarships. When you apply to Western, your application doubles as your application for admission and scholarships. So there's no box you have to check, no extra step. Our merit-based scholarships are based on unweighted GPA. And then we have our Multicultural Achievement Program and Leadership and Distinguished Scholars programs. With the Multicultural Achievement Program, you also hear us call it the MAP scholarship. We're looking for students who are involved in multiculturalism and diversity in their community. And we wanna see how you'll bring that to Western. You can write your application essay about those activities. You can show us through your activity list and what you're involved in, or you can also submit an additional essay. The Leadership and Distinguished Scholars programs are st for students with certain academic interests. So if you know what you wanna study on your application, make sure you mark that as one of your academic interests. We send out uh, invitations to apply based on what you're interested in. Next, there are departmental scholarships. These are available usually to current students, but some departments like music, as an example, do have scholarships available to incoming students. So if you know what you want to study or have some ideas, take a look at the department website. There might be awards available as an incoming student that you could apply for, or you could see what would open up down the road. For private scholarships there, the washboard.org and collegeboard.org are great resources to help you find those. The great thing about private scholarships is you can take them with you whatever school you end up at, so that gives you some flexibility. Washboard is great, especially if you're a Washington resident. It's for Washington students. College Board's open to everyone. Sometimes with scholarships, it can feel like a numbers game. If you have a scholarship you feel like you might qualify for, apply to it. You might be really surprised by the outcome, and it can make a big difference in funding your education. And then we also have our scholarship center. This is for current students. So once you start at Western and they maintain a list of awards available. So we might have some private scholarships or departmental awards. They keep a list available. So that's a great place to look for scholarships. Here we have our summary of tuition and cost of attendance for both Washington residents and out of state students. At the top here are your direct costs. So tuition, fees, housing, meals, if you choose to live on campus, it's not required. 
so these are the costs that are billed to you directly by the university. They're a set number with the exception of housing and meals. That varies a bit depending on which residence hall you live in and which meal plan you choose. On the second half, you see indirect costs. So these are not a set number. They're going to vary from student to student. Uh, textbooks, personal costs, transportation. As an example, if you're going out and enjoying all the great food we have in Bellingham, your personal costs might be a bit higher. So you have more control over what these numbers look like, but we have them there as an estimate to give you an idea of what a total, um, what a full year of attendance at Western would cost. I do also want to note we are a WUI school, uh, Western Undergraduate Exchange. You'll often hear it referred to as WUI, W-U-E. And so what the WUI does is it allows students in one state in the Western United States to attend school in another state at a reduced cost. At Western, we award the WUI as a competitive merit-based scholarship. So you don't have to apply for it, we'll automatically review you and let you know if you qualify. And I'm at the end of my slides here, so I wanna leave off with some info where you can learn more. You can find us on social media. I really recommend the Our Western Instagram account. I follow it, I have for years, and it's run by Western students. So students will do a takeover for a week, two weeks. So you can really see what Western is like through the eyes of a current student on campus. You can always reach out to us as well through social media if you think of any questions. And um, you can always contact us, let us know if any questions come up, if there's anything we can come, uh, help out with. I know applying to college can seem like a huge intensive process, but we're here to make it easy for you and to help you through it. So if there is anything we can help out with, please let us know. You can always call our front desk, send an email. You can stop in the Office of Admissions after a tour if you're on campus. So thank you for taking this time to learn a bit more about Western Washington University, and I hope that we'll hear from you soon.